Welcome. In this video, let's look at linear equations. Let's talk about what they are, and then we'll practice creating them. Imagine I have a business. My business is manufacturing and selling pink flamingo lawn ornaments. I have gathered some data about production and cost, and I've presented it here in this spreadsheet. Please have a look. In the first column, I've got the number of units that I produced in a given period. In the second column, I've got the total cost for direct materials, the materials that are easy to trace, the plastic, the paint, the metal fasteners, etc. What can you observe about my data? Well, it's rather obvious. As the units increase, the total cost increases as well. And we can see that it's going up by $6 a unit every time we produce one more. So we have stumbled upon a pure variable cost of $6 a unit. It's common to present data like this in a graph. A graph like this will help the user gain more insight from that data. It turns the data into information. And how can we build this graph? Well, we will use a linear equation. Linear equations, in this context, we have two dimensions to our graph. We have a, hor a horizontal axis, which we will call x, a vertical axis, which we will call y. The x-axis is showing the number of units produced. The y-axis is showing the total cost. We'll give these axes names. The x-axis is known as the independent variable. I choose a production volume, and that production volume gives me a total cost. So the x-axis is known as the independent variable. The y-axis is my dependent variable. The y depends on the x. We can now make a linear equation to express this relationship. And a linear equation will be in the form of y is equal to a plus b multiplied by x. y, the dependent variable, that is the total cost. a is the cost when we produce zero units. B is the variable cost per unit, which we discovered was $6. So we could make our linear equation y is equal to 0 plus $6 times x. With this equation, we can now get the total direct materials cost for any production volume. Let's say 8. So y is equal to 0 plus 6 times 8, or y is equal to $48. So that's a linear equation expressing this relationship between cost and activity level. Let's look at some more data from my company. This time we're looking at shipping costs and number of units. And we see the same thing. We've got units increasing and then we got the cost increasing as well. Do you notice what's different though? When we produce zero units, we still incur a cost of $100. That's known as a fixed cost. Then we see, as we add the units, they increase by $2 per unit. 
So we see a relationship here of a fixed and a variable cost working together. If we look at this data on a graph, what jumps out is where the line strikes the, horror, the vertical axis. It's not at zero, it's at 100. There's that fixed cost. So that fixed cost is like that. Variable cost is like that. Can you create a linear equation to express this relationship? I think you can. Pause the video, give it a try. So we use the same format. Y is equal to A plus BX or Y is equal to the fixed cost $100 plus that $2 per unit 2x. There's the linear equation. Now, imagine next month we're going to ship 12 units. Can we use this equation to get the total cost when we ship 12 units? Well, you can pause the video, give it a try. Well, that will be equal to $100 plus 2 times $12 so that will be equal to $124 when we do 12 units. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. That is a linear equation. And in our management accounting exam, we are using it to express a cost and volume relationship. What is the total cost? given an activity level or a volume of units. Now that you understand how this works, please have another look at cost behavior and you are ready to start solving high-low method problems.